So when it comes to light cap solar generators, there are a lot of options. Now, a light cap solar generator is not necessarily one that you would want for full-fledged emergency preparedness, but could absolutely do vital ascensions like a refrigerator or a freezer or maybe both, as long as they have enough solar input. Now, this unit here, the P2001 from Enor, this is one that may fit the bill, and it actually may be one of the best light cap solar generators that is currently available, but that remains to be seen, and that's why I'm going to be doing this video to show you if it's any good or not. So if you want to know about it, then you want to stay through to the end of this video, because this unit compares to some other solar generators that are on the market, but it may have a leg up on the competition. So we're going to explore all of that, test it out, see if it really does what it says it can do. So stick around for this full review of the Enor P2001. I'm going to go ahead and give you the spoiler now. Do these systems look similar? Well, that's because they're nearly identical, but not exactly identical. So this is the Ace Volt 2000, and I do like this unit. I did do a review on this unit, and I did recommend it if you had very simple needs for power. Uh, and it's nice because both of these units have life PO4 batteries, or which is lithium iron phosphate, which means they're going to last a really long time. As far as the internals go, these are pretty much identical. I'm going to go ahead and put up a picture right here. You'll see a number of the top light cap solar generators. And so you can kind of look through here real briefly. And generally speaking, I put these from best from left to right. And so you can kind of see where the Enor is going to stack up as well as the Ace Volt, as well as some other solar generators. So right up front here, you can see kind of my feelings on the whole matter on where these things stack up against each other. So there's one big difference right up front that's super apparent with these two units. The Ace Volt is actually slightly smaller, the Enor is slightly bigger, but it has this compartment up top for storing of all the cables. That is something I really like. I do wish the compartment was big enough to hold the user manual. It is not, so that's one thing I think they could have paid attention to. But so much, I'm finding these compartments to be really helpful when on the go. Just yesterday, I was testing a different solar generator that did not have a compartment like this on the top for storing stuff, and I misplaced the cable. So I had to go look for the cable. I eventually found it, but it's really nice when I can put everything all in one spot, and it's with the unit, so I know it's good to go. Now, the P2001 from Enor is actually very similar and is in the same category as the Energy Flex 1500. If you guys watched my review on the Flex 1500, you saw that I didn't have high remarks for it, but I finally received my supercharger, the MPPT charge controller that can be added to this two battery system. It took literally like 14 months to get this set up and then another eight months or something like that to get this piece. So regardless, this system is kind of outdated already. And this is using lithium NMC batteries, which I don't have a problem with. I like lithium NMC because they're lighter, but many people prefer the lithium iron phosphate, which you'd find in this unit. But crazy enough, this unit is far less expensive than this. It has a bigger inverter and it comes with a bigger internal battery, but this one is more expandable and has more solar that you can attach to it and stuff like that. So some give and take there, but I do not recommend this unit. Now I've already gone ahead and showed you the specs for this, but basically it's a 2000 watt inverter, 2000 watt hour battery with 500 watts of solar input but the question is is can it really output 2000 watts constantly and can it really input 500 watts so that's what we need to test let's go ahead and jump right into that Okay, so we are right at 50% at 22 and a half minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. Now you can hear the fan running. It's not hot, but it is definitely warm and the body feels nice and cool. So it's doing a very good job of cooling here. So with running this down to 50% and being at 22 and a half minutes, this basically means we could have run 45 minutes nonstop. And that's what I've experienced with other systems that are just like this. So that puts it at a 75% efficiency rating at a 1C discharge rate, which is really high. 1C meaning it's a 2000 watt hour battery with a 2000 watt drain. That's a very heavy load. And so 75% is okay. It's not amazing, but it's pretty average for doing a large discharge like that. Let's go ahead and get on solar. So it's not super heavy. I mean, I can carry it without resting on my leg, but it is pretty heavy. Now, if you appreciate all the testing, 
that I'm doing and all the expense that I've gone through to bring you this test, go ahead and leave a thumbs up and maybe subscribe. But what I want to do now is test how good the solar input is. So on this, we have just an Anderson power pole, which is this red and black square connector to MC4. So here's the big issue. This is rated from 12 to 48 volts and up to 15 amps on the charge controller. Now it is an MPPT charge controller, which is good. So basically what that means is I can't put more than two 100 watt or even 200 watt 12 volt solar panels together in series to connect to this because that'll exceed the 48 volt max voltage. And if you go above that voltage, that's how you fry these systems. Now you can go over on the amps and this is rated up to 15 amps. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to connect four 200 watt solar panels with two in one group, two in another, and then branch them together. So it's a series parallel combo. So we'll actually have 800 watts connected to this, but we're gonna see if we can even get close to that 500 watt solar input. So I'm connecting almost double the rated capacity, but we'll see if it can even get close to that 500 watts now. So I've got my four solar panels here. It's almost a perfectly clear sunny day. There's a super light haze and there is fires in the area. So we do have some smoke. So I've got these two connected in series. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the mail, go to here, take the mail, go to here. And I'm gonna do the same for the female. So I've got these two connected together, these two connected together, and now I'm branching them together with this parallel connection, which makes a series parallel combo. And now I'm gonna go ahead and connect these with uh, my cables here, so I can run this all the way to the Enor system. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and connect this up right here. I get a beep, and immediately we start getting a charge. We're at 250 and climbing. So we're maxing out at about 368 right here. Uh, but that's really frustrating because of how the voltage and the amperage is set up, it's really nearly impossible to get the 500 watt solar input on this. And that is the really frustrating part. So what I'm doing is taking this custom made watt meter from poweredportablesolar.com. This is good up to 60 volt to monitor solar input. And I'm gonna use it on the Enor P2001 at poweredportablesolar.com. You can get reviews on the MPS3K, the Titan, the Delta Pro, the Delta, tons of solar generators. I review everything there as well as have a shop so you can get discounts on all of this stuff. But on the input side, I'm gonna go ahead and connect the solar panels just like so, because I know I'm below 60 volts, this is gonna be able to read out, telling me 36.5 volts, and let's go ahead and connect it up. Okay, I got the beep here. And what this is gonna do is give me a live readout of how much power is coming in with the volts and the amps. And so what the MPPT charge controller has done is it has increased the amps to 16 amps, which is one amp above the rated capacity for this, but we're down to 25.5 volts. So in theory, I could have three solar panels in each group, but the problem is that the voltage starting off is gonna be higher than that 48 volts and the MPPT may burn out before it can get a lower voltage and higher amperage in order to get a better charge going in here. So realistically, that's not a safe thing to do. You really could burn out the charge controller, but it may work because the voltage is gonna get dropped once the MPPT takes over to increase the amps and lower the volts. Now, one question would be, can it charge from solar and a wall charger at the same time? I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the wall charger and just see if it can do that. Okay, we got a click, supercharge shows up right here. And let's see what happens to the input. It was at about 360, 380, somewhere around there. So we're over 1400 watts charge here, which is actually really impressive. That means this is gonna be able to charge up super fast using solar and AC at the same time, which is pretty impressive. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the solar and see what happens. It immediately drops down to about 1100. So we are getting no throttled back solar and no throttled back AC. It is putting in the full power because the AC charger is about 1100 watts, which is really fast, something really nice for the AC charging. Now, the other question would be, can it be charging while running something? So I've got an air conditioner. It's a 5,000 BTU window unit. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in and see if it works. Okay, almost a 1500 watts input. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. This is on the coldest setting, fan only. Okay, that turned on, it says we're using 75 watts and our input's almost up to 1600. That's really, really impressive. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the AC. Oh no, it didn't work. So either the surge was too high, so we're still getting input from the solar it looks like, but not from the AC. And it's flashing here the pure sine wave sign, which means we overloaded the AC. So let me go ahead and disconnect the AC input. So 
So to do that, I just turn off AC, turn on AC, and it just kicked on. Interesting, but not while on AC power charging, only with DC power charging. And it's going, you can hear it going here, and it's on the low cool setting, moving it to the high cool and extra cool. Yep, output about 400 watts. So in this sense, our solar input's about 330 right now, and our output's a little bit over 400. So you really could run this for quite a long time because the solar is pretty much offsetting all of the output that's going to the air conditioner. But it's so interesting that the AC input didn't work. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the AC charging now. Nope, that overloads it. That is really interesting. I've not seen that before. Okay, so you cannot run a high load and have the AC charging at the same time, but you can run a small load and have the AC charging at the same time. So I think total combined on AC input and output, it can't be over 2000 watts. Oh, it just surged right up to 2000. Yep, I'm on DC solar charging only and it turned on. I'm on the super cool setting of the air conditioner and you saw it went up to over 2000 watts on the output, handled it just fine. Very interesting. So all in all, it does what it says it can do except for the solar input. That is really a big issue for me and that's where the majority of these solar generators fail. So if you're running something just like a fridge and a freezer during the day, I think that wouldn't be a problem, but at night you'd probably have enough power to get through the whole night, but I don't think you'd have enough power the next day to keep running both a fridge and a freezer and get this fully recharged in a single day. If we saw we were close to about 400 watts of actual solar input, and so if you take 400 watts multiplied by an average of five solar peak hours per day, 400 watts times five hours is 2000 watt hours, which means this can be charged in a single day from zero to full if you're not running anything off of it. So if you were just running a fridge or a freezer, not both, you probably wouldn't drain this all the way down to 0% in a single night. And so with that, you probably could get back to a full charge as long as there's no bad weather, you have good sun like we did today. Now, Enor also makes a portable air conditioner, which I've also reviewed on this channel, and it's designed to work with this so that way it can be efficient. You can get some portable cooling, you can blow it straight at you put it right into your bed or something like that, have it in a small tent. That way you have air conditioning anywhere you go. I found that the portable air conditioner was okay. It's not one that I necessarily recommend unless you're sitting right in front of it and it's blowing directly on you. Otherwise, it doesn't really cool down a room very well, but that's to be expected because it's only 2300 BTUs and they do have another unit that has a higher BTU, but just be aware that they do have other products and they are trying to bring to market solutions that can help you have comforts when the power is out. Now, have they done that successfully? That's up for you to decide. Now, if you've stayed this long in the video, then you get to know the little tidbit that no one else really sees. And this is much more affordable than something like the Ace Volt and the Alcatel and the other brands that are nearly identical to this unit. So if you go down to the description below, I'll have links there that can include extra coupon codes and discounts so that way you can get this at the best price. And this is much more affordable when compared to those other units. You can also see that on my live updated solar generator comparison chart, which I'll also have a link down to below. So you can see how this compares to all the other light cap solar generators. That way you're not comparing this to something like a Titan solar generator or even something like a Delta Max, which are really in different categories. That way you can see an apples to apples comparison. If you want to get in direct contact with me where I can help you personally build exactly what kit you need, then you're welcome to become a Patreon member. Just go to patreon.com slash Minuteman Prep. And you can also reach out directly to myself and my team at info at poweredportablesolar.com. And of course, you can just go to poweredportablesolar.com, check out our shop, and that's where we're going to have all of the kits that I actually recommend. I'm going to have it with solar panels, without solar panels, the expansion batteries, all those kinds of things. So that way it's easy for you to see what options are out there, which ones are good, and get them at a discount price. I'm going to give a special thank you to all of my Patreon members. You guys are the best. I appreciate you, as well as my subscribers. I thank you so much for being a subscriber. That really helps me in getting equipment like this, and especially you viewers as well. And if you like content like this, you want to make sure you subscribe. So thank you for being here. Be prepared. The Enor P2001 is an okay system for emergency preparedness if you're doing very light loads. It is capable of running an air conditioner, like a 5,000 BTU window unit, we saw that. So if you need some portable cooling, then this may work. 
but you're definitely gonna have the solar panels paired with it so that way you're offsetting your battery consumption. But I wouldn't run that air conditioner all night because then you'll for sure drain the battery within a few hours and then you'll be sitting without any power. So keep that in mind. Thank you so much for being here. Be prepared. I will see you guys in the next video.